Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm gonna check the Leader 120mm brushless quadcopter from Full Speed RC. Inside the package we're getting the quadcopter, a 500mAh 30C 2S battery. I've seen in other videos that a 50C battery is included but maybe they changed it and now a 30C battery is included. We're getting two sets of 70mm 3 blades propellers and some velcros to mount the batteries and some extra screws. There is no charger included and by the way this is the plug and play version so you will have to provide your own receiver. The design of the quadcopter is very similar to the Flex RC Ascent which I've built and reviewed but I don't think it's a clone. The frame is designed a little bit different and the way the side plates are mounted are done using this TPU 3D printed accessories and not in the same manner that they are placed in the Flex RC Ascent model. The motors that this model is using is 1104 7500 kV motors which can handle 2 and 3S LiPo batteries. On the back we have this buzzer and an LED indicator. The EC board is a 4-in-1 20 ampere BLLES ESC controller that supports D-Shot 600. And the flight controller is an Omnibus F3 with a built-in OSD which is a great feature and it's flashed by default to Betaflight 3.1. The front camera is a 600 TVL all-in-one camera with output strength of 25 milliwatt which is a little bit disappointing. I think that 100 and 200 milliwatt options are a little bit better but still you are not going to fly this quadcopter too far so 25 milliwatt might not be that bad and in my test flight we'll see what kind of range we'll get. The camera angle can be adjusted and after you've set your desired angle just fasten these two screws on the side and you'll be ready to go. If you've got the plug and play model and you're wondering where you should plug your receiver the answer is here on the right side. So these two ports are the ground then over here you have 3.3 volts output if you want to connect a DSMX receiver this one is 5 volts and over here we have the two RC inputs I'm going to use this one which is intended to use with SBUS or PPM so I'm quickly going to connect this receiver and then weigh this quadcopter so I finished connecting the receiver and I used a double sided sticky foam in order to mount it into place just make sure the antenna is not going to get into the props so you might want to secure it with a zip tie or something like that. In addition I put the double sided velcro on the bottom to secure the battery. The weight of the quadcopter without the battery and the propellers is 61.1 grams. If we add the propellers it weighs 66.6 grams and after adding this 2S LiPo battery the total weight is 96.7 grams. The thickness of the bottom plate is 3 millimeters, which is pretty impressive and I think this is going to be a very durable quadcopter and you're probably not going to break the bottom plate easily. And the thickness of the side plate is 2 millimeters, which is quite good as well. As you can see the EEC wires are pretty loose, so I recommend to cover it with a zip tie or even with a Tessa tape or something like that just to make sure it's not going to be ripped off if, it, if you're going to crush it. So now after putting the tape it is much better secured. Let's go through the operation of the FEV camera. Short pressing the first button toggles between NTSC and PAL and if you're going to press it for two seconds it's going to flip the image and the second button this one allows it to change the channel and frequency. Short pressing it will change the channel. You can see that the red indicator is moving, the farthest LED indicator on the left is channel 1, then all the way to the right is channel 8, long pressing it will change the band, the farthest one to the left is A and the farthest one to the right is F, so in total you have 48 combinations, which means you can use 48 channels. I'm going to set it on A7 which is 5860. This is not a very convenient way of setting up the VTX and although it's not as convenient as having an LED screen, it's not that bad at all. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go through the settings in Betaflight, put the propellers on and take it for a test flight. I hope you enjoy the rest of this video.
So after flying the Little 120, I can tell you this is probably the best rate to fly micro brushless quadcopter that I've tried. It performed extremely well and it didn't suffer from the roll of death that I've seen in other videos. Maybe the earlier versions suffered from the flaws, but at the moment flying beta flight 3.1.7, it flies just great out of the box. The main downside is the camera, which didn't perform great, but for a 25 milliwatt camera, it wasn't bad at all. The quality is not amazing, and if you want to give it a real upgrade, I would add a Runcam Micro Swift FPV camera, and then your FPV experience will be greatly improved. Flight time with the 2S battery was about five minutes. Maybe on the common flight, you can achieve even six or six and a half minutes of flight time. And with the three cells battery, I got about five minutes of flight with a CNHL 500 milliampere hour three cells battery. By the way, after using the three cells LiPo battery, the motors didn't get so hot, so they can handle it pretty well. There was a little bit of gel though, and I would still stick with the 2S battery because it performed pretty well with 2S batteries and it's also going to conserve the lifespan of the motors. So as always, thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about this quadcopter, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on my next videos. Goodbye.